with Assassin's Creed going into like a fully fledged open world RPG, we knew that choice was the next logical step for us. We were like, hey, choice is our thing. It's the philosophy that, that's flowing through all of the, the creation of the game and that extends to being able to choose your character. It extends to naval and how you're going to customize your ship, how you're going to play with your ship, who you're going to recruit for your ship. And then you can make a choice about the way you're going to approach quests. It had to be everywhere or nowhere at all in terms of how we were looking at making things. So yes, the narrative will lead to uh, different uh, conclusions, but you, if you go off the beaten path, you will be surprised and you will have to make choices, sometimes dire, sometimes not. So uh, yes, we want to give that autonomy to the player. You can choose if you're going to help the Athenians dominate the Greek world or the Spartans, and you can change your choice in that playthrough as well. We wanted to approach the combat in a way that gave the player more options, more customization, more ability to have choice in the way that they approach uh, every combat situation. So that meant that we wanted to give them these awesome abilities, these brand new 30 plus uh, amazing abilities that can all be upgraded. If I want to shoot people with uh, bow and arrows and specialize in that, you can do it. If you feel that it's more like melee fighting, you can do it as well. And if you feel that uh, it's a little bit more stealth that I would like to do and, you know, get the drop on them, that's all available for you as well, so. Very poetic for someone covered in blood. I like it. The romancing, we, we have a handful of characters that we can romance. They don't necessarily intertwine with the bigger picture, so they, they're much more regional content stories or, you know, a little bit more for fun. When we set out to make the story in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we knew that we were going to have multiple endings. Now, for us, it meant making a series of choices through a uh, series of quests that would impact the ending um, and not just be multiple endings based on one decision you make at the end which sometimes other games fall prey to. Just because you're making choices doesn't mean that you're going to be cut off from half the game for making these choices. You're simply going to have your own unique experience. Something that I, I really like about our game is the variation of tones. I never thought Poseidon's anger would be too much for the mighty Cassandra's stomach. <laughs> you know, you can be a little bit more of a traditional compassionate hero, but you can also call people on their bullshit in the game. Somebody's coming to you with a much more down-to-earth, easy you know, quest like a uh, somebody stole my vase or something. So your character can say, dude, who do I look like? Like somebody's gonna get, you know, vases, you know, like it's, I'm destroying armies, you know? Well, when the player feels that he can say that, we try to put that in the word of the character as a choice as well. So he said, dude, the fuck I look like, you know, like, so, so that you can get that a little bit more in the game. You can't do it every time, but you know, like, how do I feel about saying something here? We try to, to mimic that and then have the characters react. Cassandra, what do you think we should do? Player choice is a motivator. It connects you with what you're doing. The game is talking to me and I need to uh, respond to that. So the player choices are felt in dialogues, but they're also felt in the world. So in uh, the play style that I'm going to uh, choose in the game, uh, the mix and matching of the abilities, who I want to interact with, Sparta, Athens, you know, what do I want to do as a player? You decide and it's your choice to do it. Tune in to watch next week's episode, Combat Customization, Friday at 2 p.m.